In this video, you will learn how to calculate for effective resistor for circuits that has both series and then parallel connection of both resistors. So let's look at this question that I have on the screen here. On the screen here, you could see clearly that the 15 ohms and then the 4 ohms resistor are in a parallel connection. Okay. Simply because they are connected to the same nodes here. Okay, this node here and then this node here. The 15 ohms resistor is connected to it, and then the 4 ohms resistor is also connected to it. So that tells us clearly that they are in a parallel connection. So before we be able to calculate for the effective resistance for the circuit, we must first calculate for the effective resistance for the 15 ohms and then the 4 ohms, which are in what? In a parallel connection. So let's look at that. So to calculate for effective resistance for resistors in a parallel connection, the general formula will be 1 over R, okay? Where this R represents the total resistance, okay? Because the inverse of the first resistance value plus the inverse of the second resistance value plus the inverse of the third resistance value and so on to the last term. Okay, so this is a general formula. But in this case you have just two resistors here which is the 15 ohms resistor and the 4 ohms resistor. So capacity for the value of R the total resistance that be equals 1 over 15 plus the inverse of 4, which is 1 over 4. Okay, so to get this easily, I'm going to sum this up, okay? So simplifying this, this will give me 19 over 60. Okay, so I have 1 over R to be equal to 19 over 60 here okay so now that i have 19 over 60 i want to find the value of r which is the total resistance so i'm going to make r the subject and i'll do this by doing cross multiplication so the 60 will multiply the y and then the r here will multiply with the 19 okay that's what will happen here so this will become 19R equals 60. Okay, so now you can divide both sides by 19 to get the value of what? The total resistance. Okay. So after dividing in this 19, we cancel out this. And then I have what? 60 over 19. So the effective resistance here will be what? You put what? 60 divided by what? 19. But let's convert it into decimal. Okay, so converting it, I'll get 3.158 ohms. Okay, so this is the effective resistance for the resistors that are in a parallel connection, that's the 15 ohms and then the 4 ohms. So after being this, Let's see how the circuit will now look like. Okay, so the circuit will now become something like this. I want to draw the simplified circuit after finding for the effective resistance for the resistance in a parallel connection. Okay, so our circuit now becomes something like this. Okay. Okay, just taking time to draw. Okay, so now this now becomes our new circuit. Okay, so now since we found for the effective resistance for the 15 ohms and then the 4 ohms, it now becomes a single resistor. So we represent it with this resistor here. So that will we'll have the value of what? 3.158 ohms. Okay, so that will be 3.158 eight ohms 
and then this one will be 10 ohms. So you realize that at the end, the resistors are now in what in a series connection. So you can find the effective resistance by using the formula for calculating for effective resistance for resistors in a series connection. So for resistors in a series connection, you can simply add the value of what each of the resistors. So therefore, the effective resistance as sub t will be equal to what 10 plus 3.158 ohms. Okay, 158. So this will be equal to 13.158 ohms. So this will be the value for the effective resistance for this circuit. 13.158 so let's try another question okay so let's try this example also so with this example you can see directly that we have the resistors being both in series and then parallel connection okay so these five ohms and then these five ohms here are in a series connection and then these five ohms and then these five ohms are also in a series connection okay this is because when the current is coming from this point here okay from this side here the current will flow through this resistor same current will flow through this resistor before going to this node the same thing that is happening here so first of all you see that what these five ohms resistors are in series same thing here so you can find for the effective resistance by just adding them. So that would be 10 for each side. 5 plus 5 being 10 here, and then 5 plus 5 being 10 here. Okay, so that's one easy way to solve this question. Okay, so after doing this, these two resistors will now become 10 ohms. Okay, so I have 10 ohms here. And then I have 10 ohms here also. So for this to be easy for us, I have drawn another circuit here to represent the circuit here. Okay, so since you combine these two resistors, you can represent it with a single equivalent resistor. So there will be 10 ohms. There will be 10 ohms. And then here will also be what 10 ohms. Okay, so then you see that what these two resistors are in a parallel form. Okay, they are in a parallel connection. So we just have to use the formula for finding for equivalent resistance for resistors in a parallel connection. So that would be one over the total resistance at sub t will be equal to the inverse of the resistance value. So one over R1 plus. 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, okay, plus to so the last term, 1 over R sub N. Okay, so in this case, you have just two resistors here, so that will be 1 over the total resistance will be equal to the inverse of 10 plus the inverse of 10. Okay, so from here, the easiest way for us to simplify this is to multiply the, the denominators here. Okay, so that will be 10 by 10, that will be 100. So after that, then we do cross multiplication here. Okay, we just do cross multiplication here. So the 10 here will multiply this one here, so that will give us 10 again plus. This 10 here multiplying this one here that also gives us what 10. So then you have what 20 over 100. Okay, this will give us 2 over 10, which will be equal to 1 over 5. Okay, so after this, let's continue from the top here. Okay, so that will be 1 over the effective resistance will be equal to. 1 over 5. Okay, so after doing cross multiplication, this will give us the effective resistance to be equal to 5 ohms. That's how to tackle such questions. Let's move on to the next question also for 
for more understanding on this topic. Okay, so let's try this question also. So you are supposed to calculate for the effective resistance for the resistance in this circuit. So looking at this circuit here directly, you will see that the 3 ohms resistor and then the 1 ohm resistor here are in a parallel connection. So before you can go ahead, let's first find for the effective resistance for these two resistors. So using the formula for effective resistance for resistors in a parallel connection, that is 1 over the total resistance value, that's 1 over R equals what? The inverse of all the resistance values. So that would be 1 over 3 plus 1 over 1, which is minus 1. And then we write it as 1 over 1. Okay, so from here, what I'll do here is that I'll multiply the denominators, okay, so that'll be 3 by 1, which will give me 3. Okay, and then I'll do cross multiplication here. Yeah, I'll do cross multiplication here. So that'll be 1 by 1, which will give me 1. Okay, plus 3 by 1, which will give me 3. So then I'll have what? 1 over R to be equal to 4 over 3. Okay. So that will be 1 over R equals 4 over 3. Okay, so from here we would like to make R the subject, so we do cross multiplication again. So the R multiply the 4, so then you have what? 4R equals the 3 multiplying this one here equals 3. So we have the total resistance here to be equal to what? 3 over 4. Okay, and then changing this into decimals, that give me that give me 0 0.75 ohms. Okay, 0 0.75 ohms. Okay, so instead of we using these two resistors here, we can represent it with a resistor of what? Resistance 0 0.75. Okay. So to make this easy for us. I will do the circuit here. Okay, so I still have my one ohms resistor here. I have my two ohms resistor here, but the three ohms and the one ohms resistor has been simplified here. Okay, so you are going to represent it with the equivalent resistance here, which is what 0 0.75 ohms. Okay, so at the end, you can see you can see clearly that the 0.75 ohms here. And then these two ohms here are in a series connection, so we can sum up the two here. Okay, so summing up the two will give me 2.75 ohms. Okay, so let me present it with RS. This will be equal to 0 0.75 ohms plus the two ohms. This will give me 2.75 ohms. Okay, so instead of me using these two resistors, I can represent it with a single resistor of resistance 2.75 ohms. Okay, so what will happen now is I'm going to take off this resistor here. Okay, let me join the Y. And then we write the value here. So this is now 2.75 ohms. Okay, so I've represented the two resistors with an equivalent resistor, which is which has a resistance of 42.75. And from here, you, you see that what these two resistors that are remaining here are in a parallel connection. Okay, so we can find the actual effective resistance by finding the effective resistance of these two resistors here. Okay, so since they are in a parallel connection. Use this formula here on over RT, which is the effective resistance because 1 over 2.75 okay plus 1 over 1 with the same as 1. So, the same method that I applied previously, I'm going to multiply the denominators here. So, that will be 2.75 times 1, which will give me 2.75. Okay. 
and then from there I'll do cross multiplication 2.75 times 1 okay will give me 2.75 okay then plus 1 by 1 which will give me 1 so this will now become 1 over the effective resistance because this that I have here so simplifying it that will be equal to 3.75 divided by 2.75 okay so let me clean what i have here so that we can have more space okay so now we have one over the effective resistance here to be equal to 3.75 divided by 2.75 Okay, so doing cross multiplication, I'll have 3.75 R sub T. Okay, equals 2.75. So at this point, I can divide by 2.75 and then divide by 3.75. Okay, so canceling out the 3.75 here, this should give me effective resistance RT to be equal to 2.75 divided by 3.75 so let's see the value of that divided by 3.75 okay so this will give me 0 0.733 ohms okay 0 0.733 ohms so this will be the value for the effective resistance for this circuit.